to look into yourself and to really look in the mirror and think about how you are reacting to that change versus responding. It's really being clear of what your strengths are, but where are your areas for development? Where do those strengths not shine when you are under pressure of change? I think it's about looking internally, look at yourself first before you expect others to follow. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode. I am genuinely thrilled this week to have on somebody who I have known and started to really understand a little bit more about her world and the fascinating world that it is around transformational change. Um, Alison Ness is a global change strategist, a thought leader, a people and culture change specialist and an executive coach. That's quite a mouthful of experience. And for the last 25 years, she's been delivering future-proofed people strategies through transforming leadership culture and capability to enable growth. She's got this unique mixture of people skills and change leadership skills, which we're going to dive into today. She works with executives and teams to help them reach their full potential and level up. Uh, to grow and thrive in the world of work, both now and in the future. And I am genuinely thrilled to have her on the show today. Alison, welcome. Thank you. Wow, what an introduction. And I'm super excited to be on this chat with you as well, Jimmy. Wonderful. Well, look, you know, the, I said some some pretty tongue-twistery <laughs> words there in terms of the types of things that you do. And before we, I guess, dive into deep, what is transformational change? I'd like to ask you just to share a little bit more about some of the intriguing insights that you have picked up through your experiences and what forms you and who are you? Who am I? Well, that's a question I still ask myself, uh, to be honest. Who am I? Well, I think I'm a very curious soul who is really passionate about transformation change leadership and helping others thrive in an ever-changing world. Really important in today's context, and which we'll touch on a little bit later on today. Um, my keen interest in culture change, which you've highlighted is, is a real passion of mine, is just rooted in, in this fascination of observing mindset and behaviors in action, especially in times of change. It's like peering into the heart and soul of an organization, understanding how individuals think and act and how these two dynamics can be harnessed to drive successful change. We tend to overlook that, but that's what makes change successful. And if I think about, and I've been pondering on this for a while now, where did that passion come from? Um, what created that kind of avenue that's formed my way of thinking, formed the career choices that I've made, and just um, formed how I operate daily. And for me, that defining moment um, came uh, from a profound realization of mindset and behavior and how it played out. When I witnessed the people revolution in the Philippines in a, a while back now, in 1986, um, and there I saw the extraordinary power of individual and collective mindset and behavior in driving sweeping social and political change. And what I saw during that time and what I experienced firsthand was the positivity of it, but also the negativity of it. So I was able just to see and I think that was real. My, my real realization was how the mindset played and how that influenced how people approach change from the conversations that I had in terms of that negative view of, well, we don't know anything different and we'd rather stay with what we've got, uh, which created that resistance to actually the we want change and it's for us to change it and only us that can change it that actually drove the change that happened in that country. And um, that and my other experience in my upbringing around different cultural contexts, as you know, I moved countries pretty much every three years, just brought in that unique perspective around how culture manifests change and the pivotal role that it plays over process. Um, so that's just a little bit of an insight of who I am and why I'm so passionate about this topic. And it's that, that fusion and the ability to look and think of things systematically, that holistic perspective from my upbringing and my experiences 
that was able to bring cultural and that holistic view um, really to achieve change goals and how us as leaders, and I, when I talk about leaders, I'm talking about it in the small L context. We're all leaders. Um, we're all driving change. It's not a positional position or power. Um, we can all affect change. And it's that that I believe um, the change that's with us. It's, it's, it's us that drives change. I remember back to our initial conversation and you were sharing with me some of the places you've lived. And obviously as somebody who's been to 70 countries, I think I'm pretty well traveled. And I meet someone like you who, and it seems to be all the places that you've lived on my wish list. So <laughs> I'm extremely envious of some of the experiences that you've gained from, and the same as me, you know, it's that sort of multicultural lens on culture and how the different levers work in different organizations and different cultures and the ability to analyze that. I also love that you are bringing that lens of the the commercial business lens to culture change and and how transformation can happen in a positive way. But you know, a little challenge here for us to work through is change is is not a particularly new concept. You know, change management, change in business, things change in organizations. That's been around for a long time. So why all of a sudden is this concept of transformational change leadership as a game changer becoming such an important thing for leaders to know about yes i mean you know change is definitely not new as you know jimmy and yet here we are still talking about transformational change leadership as a game changer and in my view it is a game changer because it really does place emphasis on the cultural aspects above and beyond process i think we naturally tend to default to process it's the hands it's the the what rather than the how which is the heart which is how you lead into change and if i think about transformational change again some aspects of transformation are not new i mean change is constant it's always been there it will continue to be there and um, yet we're still grappling with it and i think the reason why we're grappling with it is we're still dealing with how we respond um, versus how we react to change. So yes, the context is a little bit different, but if you think about the conversation around AI, for example, that was the same conversation that we had around the internet coming along. So it's not really any different, but we're still dealing with our reactions to it rather than our response to it. And I just think we overlook those cultural um, elements, those cultural aspects that you and I have just touched on earlier on. And I think when we talk about transformational change leadership, as I referred to a little bit earlier, it's not about a positional statement. A leadership is a privilege, not by position, but it's really around the choice by character. It's how, it's the how you want to be seen, how you want to actually deal with your own emotions when you're dealing with change, being aware of that and how you lean into it, which others will look to you for guidance. So I always use the analogy of, you know, the air hostess on a plane. The minute the air hostess starts to panic, that's when you start to panic uh, because everyone's looking at the air hostess. But that's also being, you know, really open about how you feel about the change. And I think what we don't do enough yet of is actually being really honest about how we feel about the change and what we lean into straight away is a reaction and then we kind of jump straight from there to the process um, which doesn't really take people on a journey and really puts the emphasis on us as the change agent and what we can do to set that tone set that scene for it to be successful and I think, you know, we, and then this is where you and I have had conversations around high performance. What, you know, we've talked about quite a bit is that performance is still important for you to perform, to be at your best in times of change, to stay resilient as we're dealing with change upon change upon change, the pace, the complexity, but we're dealing with a whole gambit, more and more of emotions. People are being more open about how they feel. Um, they're being a lot more um, expressive. And what we're finding on the other side is that leaders are challenged by that in terms of how do I respond to it? And really the angle that I follow or, or look into is how might you explore their potential? Um, because that will set the scene for performance. I'm so fascinated that when we're talking about 
change leadership and the beautiful explanation there of the differences. And what I was hearing was that this transformational change leadership is actually far more important about looking inside yourself than what you do to others. And then once you've worked out what's going on inside, you can start to share that and take others with you. And you're not just doing a process. There's, there's a lot of people do change process, but this is actually about almost like changing hearts versus changing heads, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of the the questions that, you know, us as leaders, as a, in a position, but also, uh, as I said, in terms of self-leadership, how often do we pause and ask ourselves, reflect on our own mindset and behaviours? Instead, we kind of go, well, we're, we're leading others, therefore this is, you know, this is what we need to do, and off we go. And um, we basically tell. Um, the language is very much tell. It's... Um, you know, I'm going to create a vision that all of you are going to come behind it and, and uh, we're going to achieve this vision together. Um, but no one really stops and goes, well, actually, my how I'm what I'm thinking and my own behaviours will influence that. It's that fellowship concept. You can tell someone that your idea is great. You can tell someone that here's the destination, but actually to get people believing in that, um, to work with you really requires you to self-reflect your own mindset and behaviors at play. And, you know, I've been in, I've had the privilege of working with a lot of people and, and this goes for us, myself, as well as working with others, right? Where we don't actually create that investment of time um, and investment in terms of your own self-reflections of your own journey on change, how you react to change, why you react that way to change, what does that reaction look like and how does it play out so that those who are looking at you, those that you are working with to help you solve this problem, um, actually feel it. It's a feeling rather than just listening to words. And I just think that we just don't spend enough time reflecting on that. So to your, to your point, why transformation change leadership is a game changer it's look at yourself first before undertaking any change process. I think you brought up a really interesting point there around sometimes it's around taking time to look at yourself before you start doing things to others. But of course, many of the challenges that probably most of our listeners have is that time is of a premium. Uh, and that can be a real challenge for them to make time to be self-reflective, to be introspective, to look at what's going on inside their own heart before they make a choice or a decision or they have to act. So that's one challenge. But what are some of the other challenges with transformational leadership? Because what I'm hearing is this is great and we should all be doing this and it's fabulous, but clearly there's some stuff that might also not be so great or is stopping people doing it naturally. What are those challenges? I think, um, and, and I'll jump on to, onto the time perspective, I think the, the challenges are, it's that cultural piece. It's really understanding, you know, if you've got a mindset that um, I just need to get through this or um, I'll just follow this process and, and pray that actually I'm going to get the results, it's, it's that challenge is how you approach it. That challenge is about... Um, being curious enough to undertake a journey to kind of go, well, actually, I need to explore myself first. I need to explore how I'm dealing with it. And, and I need to explore how I can react in a different way by responding rather than reacting. And I think going back to your earlier point, it's a choice. I think, you know, when, when we talk about investment of time, it's actually a choice. It's the same thing as investing, and you'll know this from, from, from your work, investing time to look after yourself. Well, this is looking after yourself. This is investing time, putting oxygen on your own, on, on yourself first and foremost, to kind of go, what is the change going to need of me first before I can expect it of others? So do I truly believe in the change? Do I truly believe that um, that uh, this is a, a journey, not a destination? Do I truly believe that um, I can get past my initial thoughts as to whether I buy into this or not? It, it's asking those self questions, which is the oxygen mask, and that's a choice. So for me, the biggest challenge is your own mindset, your own mindset, your own willingness to be curious, 
your own um, ability to explore where can this take you, point one, and then point two, how open am I going to be to include others into that circle, into that, that kind of, into those boundaries, because I can't do this alone. And I think what you find with a lot of leaders is this notion, and this is where the mindset comes into play, this notion of, when I can't show, I can't show to my team that I'm struggling with this, or I can't show to my team that actually I'm getting really tired of, um, I'm, re- I'm, being, I'm, I'm feeling worn down because this is relentless. And I think this notion of, well, I can't show that because it will show that I'm weak. And if I'm not um, kind of carrying the flag, then how can I expect my team to carry the flag when actually the opposite is true? Um, as you know, and as I've seen, the minute the leader kind of just lets the mask down, um, the team just welcome it with open arms because they feel that they can articulate how they are feeling as well. And it becomes a problem shared rather than everyone going, yes, yes, everything is fine and I'm fine when that's not the reality at all. Uh, change is hard. And if we are on that treadmill, it's only by including others and being really human about it by going, yeah, you know what, today I'm not believing it. I'm not feeling it. And then you get the team to rally behind you. And it's a way of accepting that you can't do this alone. And so mindset plays in all of those elements, but they stand alone as well. It's how willing are you to be very open about how you are feeling. So it's really tapping into that emotional aspect and how willing are you to be really open about it, being vulnerable about it. And not everyone is willing to be vulnerable because it's uncomfortable. Isn't it? Yeah, I, I completely <laughs> I completely <laughs> resonate. And, and it's, you know, it's fascinating to me. This is yeah. where a lot of our work starts to overlap. And we talk an awful lot about the power of vulnerability and building trust. But also, yeah. once you have that trust, there's a massive push to reducing the factors that lead to burnout when you are in a trusted, connected team and you can be vulnerable with one another. So I love this idea of actually we're also helping to build culture and change the way we lead. And there's all these amazing things that are happening. So not only are we going to be reducing our burnout, we're going to improve our culture, we're going to improve our business results, we're going to improve our enjoyment of work, and we're going to make some positive change. I think we've agreed that there's a win-win here, right? Yeah, definitely. And and where I've seen, um, you know, from our experiences, but I'll share a story, um, that deep connection instantly where you achieve all of those things by someone, in this case, it was someone in a senior position who was leading the transformation. In a, if I think about it in a business context, when they were leading the transformation program. And as you know, transformations are huge. And, you know, the, the, for months, the, the rallying cry was, we need to change this because of that. And, and everyone understood it. But there was a disconnect. Uh, there was a disconnect with the leadership team and the executives on that because they didn't feel that voices were being heard. They didn't feel that they were in it together. And this particular individual shared a personal story. And it wasn't a transformation story. It wasn't a story about how they led a transformation and and what they did that achieved it to be successful. Hey there, Jimmy here. I just wanted to drop in on this episode and say an enormous thank you for all of the amazing reviews and testimonials and feedback we're getting about the Ways of Working podcast. Top 10% globally and absolutely thrilled to be there bringing as much value as we can from the Ways of Working community to you, our listeners. I wanted to drop a quick note of one of the beautiful reviews that was left by Jenny M49. Thank you so much, Jenny, for that kind review. Jenny says, for those people who want to gain a practice practical performance edge, full of practical tips in every episode, tune in here. Jenny, we really appreciate your feedback. Thank you so much. And hope that you, our listeners, will follow and subscribe using your favorite podcast platform of choice and bring every episode to share value, knowledge and expertise from our incredible guests. Take care. Speak soon. It just shared a very personal story about a a situation that they experienced during the times of change. Um, that had a significant impact on them. And it was during a period of change within their context um, that something was said to them that basically uh, really hit them in the belly and questioned their whole 
values, questioned everything about them, questioned their own credibility, questioned, I mean, you name it, you know, it was one of those um, off the cuff remarks that in times of stress, someone says something to somebody and it wasn't, I mean, this person is a very calm, very considered so they didn't react to something that was said in a way that was emotional, but it deeply affected him. And the audience listening to that story saw an individual that was leading this huge transformation, was very much articulating the what needed to be done and was considered as actually quite, um, what's the word, vanilla in the sense of not have much emotion, not um, share the complexities of dealing with change. And so when he shared his personal story and how it impacted him, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. It, because he not only shared the story, there was a moment in his storytelling where his voice started to quiver. And that instantly, the whole room, I just watched the room and they just went quiet. And everyone where they could just feel, they could see the impact that this had on this person. And in a moment, uh, that person changed the perspective of, or the, the perception that people had of him. And straight away, people um, from then on, the, the, the context of the conversation was, I need your help because I can't do this alone. And I myself have my own roller coaster rides. And by sharing that, it just flipped. Everyone connected. They started to have conversations with him because they had something to, you know, uh, relate to because they were then able to share their own experiences of it. And that was something that we'd worked with him on in terms of, you know, you're going to have to provide a story deep into that protection box because actually people are going to want to hear more rather than assume or rather than play into your fear of actually people are going to think less of me. And in this particular situation, they thought more of him as we knew that that was going to happen. And the strength of that connection, the strength of instantly people feeling we're in this together, um, just changed the whole tone and changed, you know, the way of, of conducting transformation from then on. Um, so you can see, I saw just there, the, the power of that vulnerability. And it's usually what you're fearful of the most, which actually doesn't ring true in practice. And it's just accepting that vulnerability is not a sign of weakness. It's actually a sign of strength. And how many people have a hundred stories that they are willing to share with you once you just enable that door to open a little bit. And I think that's what's missing in transformation and transformation with change leadership. It's the ability to connect on a story, on a shared experience. And that requires the leader, the person to really think about their own mindset at play. And if they're willing to, you know, open the kimono, so to speak, or, or let others be in, in terms of, you know, what's playing out for them, uh, because the result is very different. I really like the way you articulated that. And I, I want to echo it because I think it's an important message to get across. Instead of saying, this is what we need to do, follow me. This is all about saying, this is what I think is the right answer based on what I know, but I don't think I can do it alone. And I do need your help. So can you come help me and help me make this work or help me make something work that's going to be better for all of us? It is that vulnerability that comes through and opening the kimono and very visual there for a second, but it is, it is it's, that, it's, that, it's that exposing yourself behind the suit of armor that a lot of executives traditionally wear because they believe they have to be infallible. Well, by that level of seniority, you should know and you should have it perfect and you should have all the answers. And in reality, you can't. And often you can't do that without the people around you. Um, no, and I think it's it's playing into that curiosity. Like it's it's being open, yes, but it's also being open to the fact that I don't have all the answers. None of us have all the answers, regardless of your position level in an organisation. I mean, you talk to CEOs today. I, you've talked to them. I've talked to them, and they're all sitting, scratching their heads, going. We know that change will be always the same, but this is different. Like we're just the scale of it, the complexity of it, the pace of it, and just the fact that it's 
it's not only constant and we're dealing with change fatigue, but we're, we're dealing with uncharted waters. The way that we used to approach this, the, the playbook as they called it, which I always smile because I go, well, the playbook just doesn't exist anymore. And, and, you know, we should actually stop talking about a playbook because we are dealing with uncharted waters. And so the curiosity of actually, I don't have all the answers. Help me, i.e. team, we're in this together. Help me work out what the answers are. And and again, you know, in my work with 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 another, I'll just share another story where where I worked with a, an executive who was going through a, a structure change in his business. And what uh, he approached it as was we're going through a change because people have not gone through a structure change before, and and therefore this will be quite a, a big reaction for people. But I took him on a journey uh, and his leadership team of actually this starts with you and you can move all the boxes and names that you want, but how you are behaving is actually causing a change resistance. So for example, bless them, they had their own offices. Um, so he sat in an office, a glass windowed office. I didn't think they existed anymore, but in some organizations they do. Uh, and his leadership team, i.e. his GMs are all sitting in, a, in an office. They didn't have one individually, they had one collectively. And I said, what do you think that gives an impression of to the rest of your teams? And they had thought about it. They thought it was normal. Uh, well, you know, we've got confidential conversations. I said, yeah, that's what meeting rooms are for. So I put it on to the CEO that if you really want as part of your journey, and in this case, it was a structure change, but there were other elements of change associated with it. Um, I said, you've really got to change how you are being seen, but also your own mindset of, well, I need to have my desk or my my office um, for confidentiality reasons. And, you know, I worked with him for, uh, for a wee while and hats off to him. Um, he was like, right, uh, I know you're going to bring the sledgehammer to the, um, to the office. He used to have a laugh about it. And I said, yep, when you're ready. And he said, well, I'm a bit nervous um, because it's just not something that I've done before. So I said, okay, well, what is it that you're nervous about? And he said, well, you know, this, this whole being out in the open, he was more worried about being out in the open and the distractions and all of that. And I worked with him in terms of all of those fears. And I said, you know what, let's just smile it and give it a go. Anyway roll on a few weeks later of us um, going ahead with it, he was smiling like a Cheshire cat because for him, he felt that instant connections and he could actually hear what was going on on the, on the floor. And he went, wow, I didn't, um, I didn't appreciate some of these conversations and I wanted to be closer to the people and actually I'm now enjoying walking past the desks and actually hearing and having those conversations and, and actually understanding what challenges they're facing into and how I might be able to support. So again, it was just changing that mindset of, I know I can't because I'd be seen as less effective or less knowledgeable and really understanding that the I doesn't exist anymore. It's the we and being an island, you know, an island can only stay an island for so long before waves crash over it. So it's it's just kind of changing that that perspective. And going back to our earlier point, we just don't invest enough time on how might we, what, what would that look like and breaking down all of those fears, as well as that curiosity of, well, just let's give it a go. I mean, we can change it if it's not working, but let's give it a go and let's try it. So we get, we tend to fall back to process and rules and boundaries and kind of put these constraints on ourselves rather than the art of possibility and that more positive language. The thing that amazes me out of yeah. that as well is that we put constraints and choices and decisions on ourselves that don't even serve or make us happy. <laughs> we, it's almost like we keep going back and keep no. running and, put, and headbutting the wall because that's what we've always done. And yeah, it, it amazes me. So very similar conversations in many contexts. And that, that leads yeah. us nicely to one of my final questions, Alison, which is, there's obviously, you know, a lot is changing in the world right now and transformational change leadership is becoming a key skill for the future of leadership. What are some of those trends and developments that you're seeing in being a transformational change leader that you could share with us? The trends and developments is, you know, back to my earlier point, um, it's getting harder out there. 
Um, and I think people will revert to type in the sense of that as you deal with more and more change, and, and we've touched on actually the real enemy is change fatigue more and more. So what happens with that is more and more the behaviors play into that. The more tired you get and the more reactionary you become, the more emotional in terms of this is too hard. It's a too hard basket. And so when you think about, you know, we need to lean into that more and more, recognize it for what it is, lean into that investment more and more, and really explore the fear of, of as you said, it, what's limiting the beliefs, what's, what's limiting the possibility. That is, for me, when I think about future trend, you know, it's still an evolving field. And you have, as with change, you have some that are very open to it, and dive in feet first and go, yes, I see it and help me. How might I help me navigate through it? And then you have those that go, oh, you know what? Heard it before. Don't look here. No problem. I think I do really well in this space. Or it's still a little bit pink and fluffy uh, because it's to do with, you know, feelings and emotions. And, you know, I don't want to go there, quite frankly. Just tell me what I need to do and let's get on with it. So you've got those different so it is an evolving field, and I think the evolving trend is really, and the challenge that we've got is we hear these words over and over again. So leading with empathy and leading with authenticity. And I just want to pause for a minute because I know you and I have had conversations about this. Empathy is very different to sympathy. And what you're finding is that everyone is falling into that sympathy bucket. And what I mean by that is empathy is understanding what someone is experiencing Whereas sympathy is actually taking that emotional context onto yourself. So sympathy is about taking on that, that emotional response, whereas empathy kind of draws a line and goes, look, I hear you and I share what you are experiencing. Then how might we actually start to, to show some direction into that positive coming out of that victim mentality, which is normal uh, of someone going through change. But you've got to recognize your own, are you a sympathy owner or are you an empathy? And those are the questions that we need to keep asking our, ourselves. And then the other the other bit around authenticity, you know, we hear it a lot, be yourself, but people are not being themselves. So it's really putting that to the test. Those are emerging trends. That is what is going to set you apart. That is what's going to make transformation change. Uh, which isn't stopping, actually successful. And the other one is flipping to an ab abundance mindset. Like you said, constraints, we very much turn to the negative side instead of, well, what could that look like? What would be the possibility in that? How might I um, do this differently? And being really open to it, uh, the journey, not the destination, as I call it. Beautifully articulated. And, you know, we could probably go on for a long time talking about the role of AI and hybrid working and uh, oh, yes. how the mental health oh. um, challenges that people are now encountering in the workspace as leaders, they can all have these big impacts on the way that you're making choices in the way you lead. But if you were to leave our listeners with one soundbite or one idea of everything we've spoken about today when we're talking about transformation or change leadership, what would that be? For me, it's looking to yourself. It's really look in the mirror and think about how you are reacting to that change versus responding. It's really being clear of what your strengths are, but where are your areas for development? Where do those strengths not shine when you are under pressure of change? I think it's about looking internally, look at yourself first. That would be my soundbite before you expect others to follow. I love that. And I'm a great advocate of doing the um, the, <laughs> the self thermometer activity. I don't know if you know this one, the self thermometer. What am I like at 80%? What am I like at 100% when I'm cloaked to burnout? And often many of those same tendencies start to come up when I'm experiencing pressure due to change and things either feeling like they're being done to me or I've got to do something that I'm uncomfortable with. Some of those same tendencies come out. So, uh, yeah, we've got, we could go on for literally uh, days, I think, talking about this. Dancing. I know. <laughs> if people. And it's not easy, right? It's, it's a journey. 100%. It's a journey. I mean, we, we both you and I have talked about applying that own 
mindset to our own how we deal with change and you know one step forward two steps back sometimes but it's being really aware of that's the intent and and conscious of that and it's and it's, yeah. it's fitness and yeah. you've got to build up your leadership fitness to be able to do these things Absolutely. and that means you're not going to be an olympic class um, sprinter on your first time it's going to, you'd be the the wobbly one at the park run trying to get to grips with some of the techniques and it can be clunky at first but if you start, you can only get better. It's like this podcasting game. You can only get better by doing more of it. Exactly. Um, if people wanted to reach out to you and connect, Alison, what is the best way for them to do that? Oh, the easiest way is just through LinkedIn. On my LinkedIn profile, there's there's um, all my details in terms of reaching out, and uh, people do so that way. It's the easiest way of doing it. So that would be my suggestion. Just to start that conversation, help. Um, teams that are needing or individuals who need to go through that process of really understanding themselves. And I think to your earlier point, you know, what is different that I bring to the table is understanding the transformational change context and helping them navigate through change. So it's really from that lens and looking at that cultural side. But um, yeah, LinkedIn would be the easiest way of connecting And we will pop Alison's details in the show notes right below this episode so you can reach to her directly and have a cut conversation or indeed reach out to us here at the high performance leader podcast and we can connect you through Alison. it's been genuinely fascinating to listen to so many it's almost like having a mirror tape shined up to us on some of the work in the culture space but having that kind of meeting of the minds on some of the benefits but also some of the challenges and some of the ways through those challenges for leaders who want to become transformational change leaders Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it and uh, look forward to keeping in touch on the new and improved, exciting journey that you're going on yourself through transformational change, I guess. Thank you, Jimmy, and a pleasure's all mine. I've really thoroughly enjoyed uh, connecting with you and uh, having this conversation today, and I look forward to chatting with you some more. <laughs> Magic. Thanks, Alison.